Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter, and we've been joined by Crash the Wonderbird. So, this is the 11 month video after my stroke. Um, so, I'm going to set this video to upload at about 10, quarter after 10 in the morning, uh, which is roughly the time in the morning I had my stroke on the 21st of June 2018. No one sets out that day to have a stroke. For those of you that have had a stroke um, you know, or a brain injury, You don't know, you don't start out your day intending to be literally the most helpless you've ever been in your entire life. Uh, went to work that day, didn't, kind of felt off, felt kind of cold, fluish. Uh, at one point I noticed I had to fight to form words. Like just, I was typing an email out to someone on a corporate level. And I, I, I remember I've never had that level of difficulty spelling or just forming a thought and I remember talking with someone and shortly thereafter finding the floor literally I have never felt that level of helplessness that level of just fucking terror absolute fear that level of dire uncertainty that level i'm gonna be honest in, unless you've ever had that feeling because you've been in that situation i was on the floor i remember i remember fighting to think just to be able to to initiate let alone complete a thought I, I remember being loaded into the ambulance and the paramedic, he, he was great from what I remember. He was trying to have a conversation with me and I remember it was pretty much one-sided. I remember sobbing in the ambulance. I remember having a couple of really good panic attacks, both in the ambulance and then in Emerge. And I remember more than a couple times having a dire sense of just fear, of just uncertain, unadulterated, fuck, I'm going to die. Like, I'm going to die not being able to say my own name. Very effectively. Uh, it's probably the scariest thing you'll ever have to encounter. Short of maybe having a heart attack, but at least during a heart attack, you should be able to verbalize what's going on in your world. I, that wasn't really so much. If you if you go on my uh, channel, and I'll actually put the link in the video, Freedom Day 1. That's the day I got out of the hospital, roughly three days after my stroke. Uh, and it wasn't none too pretty. Uh, excuse the camera work on that video. Uh, that's my buddy Dave. Uh, he's a bit avant-garde. He, uh, he failed out of film school um, on three different continents and six different film schools. Um various reasons you watch the video you'll figure it out um was and then when you get out of the hospital there's fear uh, having had a history working with brain injury uh, clients both traumatic and acquired uh i knew within the first 10 days i was gonna die if i if i was going to die it was in the first 10 days after my stroke i, I knew the statistics i knew the potentialities and i had to give myself permission to sleep uh, then you get the aphasia the apraxia the anomia that was really bad for about the first two ish weeks it would come and go uh, I found as that my day progressed it got a little bit better but as soon as I went to sleep when I woke up it's like a reset button was hit uh, then there was the visits to physio with my lovely physiotherapist uh, there was rehab with my speech pathologist, rehab with my occupational therapist. And then I did a lot of rehab at home. Having worked with brain injured clients, uh, I knew some of the things I needed to do for myself. And some of it was just the routine bullshit of life, like learning to chop food again and not ending up looking like this, you know, 
um, or having blood dressing on a salad. Uh, there are still challenges 11 months after a stroke. There are still difficulties 11 months after the stroke. There are still successes 11 months after a stroke. Um, so don't think that just because I'm 11 months post-stroke that everything is completely rosy and cheery or everything is completely, you know, drab and dreary. It's, it's a mixed bag. Some days are easier than others. Some days are incredibly easier than others. Some days are almost normal. And then you get the days that are just absolute shit sandwiches. And the only way to eat a shit sandwich is a little bit extra mayonnaise, a little bit of ketchup, and one bite at a time. That's really the only way to eat a shit sandwich. <laughs> just one bite slowly after another. Um, you don't really have a lot of control in some cases when you have a stroke. A lot of things get taken out. Like, you get robbed of some of the sense of control that you've had. You know, you're a fully formed human. You're a fully formed adult human. You haven't needed help. Now, what I'm about to say, forgive the fact you're sick for a week or two because uh, you've got like pneumonia or the cold or the flus or like you have some significant short-term health issues. Uh, like I had to have massive emergency surgery in 2015. Uh, and during that period of time, yeah, I needed help getting dressed occasionally simply because range of motion was an issue, right? Um, but that doesn't count because I still had complete uh, control over my faculties. I still had complete control over my body. I didn't have a communications issue, right? So that doesn't count, so to speak. But when I mean lack of control, I mean you lose the control, so to speak, of going up and down stairs. Uh, you lose the control of you know, you're not taking a shower today because standing in the slip and slide of death is the less than smart idea. So you may need to get uh, a, a, um, a shower chair. You may be bathing more often. You may need someone help you to bathe. Uh, lack of control, meaning for the first week or two, uh, I ate I ate out a lot because I didn't trust myself cooking at times. Uh, you know, you lose the control of many things, and that's just the reality of having a stroke. And, and I'll, I'll admit, I had a, initially, at presentation at emergency, my stroke was moderate. I was in the moderate scale. After having the medication, and the rehabs, and all the other funness, there's a high likelihood, given another 13 months, you may never know that I had a stroke. Right? That, that's, that's a distinct possibility. I still have days where I get fatigued. Uh, I still have days where I get overwhelmed by uh, noise, sound, people, what have you. But all, the ultimate takeaway is my life is different, but it's not unfulfilled. Uh, my life has changed, and I have changed. The stroke has changed me, but that doesn't change the way I want to embrace my life. That doesn't mean I'm curling up in a ball, putting on my morning clothes, and you know, just going to avoid the world. Unfortunately, the world and I don't get along well some, oh, at, at some times, and that's mainly because my brain and I don't get along at times. So I have to accept the fact that my new normal has some limitations. My new normal has some adaptations. My new normal has some improvisations. And that's just the reality of my new normal. There's, there's nothing I can do about that. And for those of you that have had a stroke or a brain injury, uh, you're aware of exactly how decisive you need to be in making those changes. And it's not that 
you would wish you could go back to your old normal. Because trust me, if I could wave some magic wand and 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 be able to go back, either using a TARDIS, a Wayback Machine, uh, any one of the Star Trek captains, because to all of them the temporal prime directive is merely a misguided suggestion. If I could go back and not have the stroke. Definitely, I, I would do that in a heartbeat. That's not a rally. Stroke has taught me many things. Uh, the stroke has taught me many things. Some of them good, some of them mediocre, some of them not so good. Uh, it's taught me many things about myself, many things about other people. Uh, and ultimately... Once you've had your stroke or your brain injury, you're going to learn who is t in, who's going to be there to help you through the dark days. You're going to learn who's going to be there for the good days. You're going to learn who's going to be there through the mediocre days. And I'll be honest, there are people that are just going to fuck off. They're like, oh, no, and they're going to leave. And it's not you, that's them. Right. Uh, if they really choose not to be there for the bad days, they were only really there for the good days because maybe they felt they needed to be. Uh, I don't know. I. It is what it is. So, I'm 11 months post-stroke. In four more weeks, it'll be a year. I'll have my new first birthday, which I'm going to celebrate with a cake with a big wax one on it. Um, I now officially have two birthdays. My official birthday, uh, which is my date of birth, um, or at least that I'm told that's my date of birth. I wasn't really there that day. I just have a lot of witnesses. Um, I have a piece of paper saying I was born that day. So I'm going to assume I was born that day, but I really don't know because I don't remember it. No, I'm not a sovereign citizen. Just fucking with you. Um, and then I've got my new birthday, which is June 21st. So I'm going to forever be celebrating two birthdays. So let it be known in all realms that I hereby command that I will now be celebrating two birthdays. Yes, that obligates all of you for two sets of presents. So anyways, on that note, I'm going to bid you all good day. If you've liked what you've been watching for the last 11 months, please like, share, subscribe. Uh, if you happen to know someone going through their own post stroke journey or someone supporting someone going through their post stroke journey, please like, share, subscribe, point the channel out to them. They will... Uh, probably get something out of this if you happen to you know either seeing yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke that being someone who appears to be befuddled confused or has an immediate lack of balance someone that has uh, vision problems they see it a, they can't see it in one eye they can't move their eyes in a certain direction they see it a grayscale they only see it a little dot in the world uh, someone who has facial droops so there's a visual slacking of the facial muscles someone that has uh, the inability to raise both arms equally, effectively, or at all. The inability to smile equally, effectively, or at all. Slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. General body weakness, weakness on one side, or the inability to stand unaided. Please, immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.